Uh, I'm a Swedish guitarist. Basically, I'm a classical guitarist, but I also have a background playing electric guitar. In fact, when I was a boy, that's what I really wanted to become, you know, a session guitarist and a pop star, if you will. So, so uh, for somebody like me, uh, this piece by Steve Reich is uh, perfect. It's uh, from a family of pieces for an instrument where the player is uh, pre-recording him or herself. Uh, in this case, uh, at the most, it, there, it has uh, 14 pre-recorded parts, and then you play the 15th part live along with the tape. Although you could be also, which is nice socially, you could, you could be 15 players playing together, but yeah, that, that's a whole different story, of course. It's actually the most uh, uh, important part of the interpretation of the piece, really, is the pre-recording bit. And that because then when you play your live part, you know, you're sort of stuck with everything you did in the first place. So when you do the pre-recording, that's when you uh, have the chance to, you know, you know, make your own interpretation, if you will. Finally made my electric guitar version. I, I quite like it because there's something about when you, you know, stack a lot of uh, guitars on top of each other, uh, it gets sort of... Uh, <laughs> uh, tight in the middle, you know, because the classical guitar is very middle-oriented, uh, whilst an electric guitar with a steel string it has more high-end, you know, trebles and low bass, so I, th I think it, it works uh, better, actually. So this is my f now my favorite version of that piece. <laughs> Principle is, is very clever because uh, uh, although you have all the pre-recorded parts, when you perform it, it's perceived as if the live guitar is sort of presenting a theme, a motif, and then picked up by uh, one of the pre-recorded guitars. So it's, uh, many people think that the player is, is uh, looping himself or herself, but uh, that's not the case. Everything is pre-recorded that you hear except from the live guitar. So. Uh, uh, Usually the, the motifs are very simple, like a... Very, uh, not very elaborate, but then uh, when you stack them on top of each other and uh, develop them a little bit and then change, you know, after maybe a minute or two, the key uh, is changed and then the effect is dramatic. <laughs> But I remember so clearly, you know, performing this piece for the first time because, you know, to an audience. And I remember thinking, oh, people must be so bored <laughs> because uh, you're used to p performing music where, you know, the pieces are sort of packed with information. And in this case, not, not a whole lot is happening, you know, for quite a bit of time. But then when finally something is happening, then the effect is dramatic. So. very obvious, you know, what's being played live and what's pre-recorded. He's, uh, he's using, uh, you know, uh, imitation, of course, but also transposing the themes and develop, developing the phrases. There are some, place, pl some places where it's obvious, for example, a chord like this. And then that's being picked up by one of the pre-recorded guitars, then it's very obvious, of course, because then you can also see what's being played live and what's not. And then 
finally I just, uh, I was told that Pat Metheny plays it from memory. So I, I sort of wanted to prove to myself that I could do it. Uh, and that took me many, many years to do, maybe 15 years of, you know, practicing and performing on and off. <laughs> In many ways it's more difficult to memorize than uh, a few by Bach, for example. It was such a coincidence that I discovered it. I was browsing, browsing music in a bookstore in, in New York. I was a student at Juilliard. And in the Juilliard bookstore, I was just uh, looking through guitar music. And there was this uh, full score of Electric Counterpoint. I had, <laughs> didn't know of the existence even. Uh, I was vaguely familiar with uh, Steve Reich, but I loved Pat Metheny. So I bought the score. It was quite expensive. <laughs> but uh, wow, I really... Uh, had so much fun performing the piece, you know, uh, in all kinds of places, from tiny chamber music exercises to Royal Albert Hall. So it was a good, one of my best purchases ever. <laughs>